And I thought, like back then when Jesus rose from the dead, he visited his disciples that were closed up in a small room. They were afraid, rightly afraid. And back then, Jesus just suddenly was there through the door. And I want to encourage you, where you're sitting, maybe in your chair, your sofa, that Jesus is right there with you. He's sitting right next to you. He wants to speak to your heart this morning. I'm so happy God hasn't changed. I want to look at the Bible text Luke 5, 1 through 11. Luke 5, 1 through 11. We know this story, most of us. <clears throat> it's about Peter and his encounter with Jesus, where he calls him to follow him. So, verse 1 to 11, chapter 5 of Luke. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake Gennesareth and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draught of fishes that they had taken. And so was also James and John and the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Simon, fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And they all brought their ships to the land and forsook all and followed him. Lord, we thank you today that you're the same. We thank you for this precious word that you've given us. And Lord Jesus, we want to come to you with an open heart because we know you are the one who can give life, that you speak and your word will be alive. You want to encourage us and strengthen us with your word that we know your will more and more. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Our God is still looking for people that are not just excited about Jesus, but are ready to go for Jesus and build his kingdom. The whole Bible, it was like this. God is always seeking, who will go for me? Who is ready to be my messenger? We see it in Isaiah chapter 6. He said, who shall I send? And who will go for me? God is not just looking for people that were listening and excited about what Jesus said, but he's looking for people that have a heart full of humility, that are willing to go. And as Isaiah heard this call, he said to the Lord, Here I am, send me. And we need to give an answer to this call where God says, Who will I send? And today, even this morning, God has put this question again where He's asking, Who will I send? Who will really follow me? Jesus, a lot of people were excited about Jesus. We read in this passage, there were so many people that Jesus had to get out on the Sea of Naz uh, Galilee and able to teach. Jesus saw these many people, but he saw one thing. 
He saw Peter. This Peter, who had a heart and a spirit that was willing and humble and ready to follow Jesus. He saw a lot of people around him. But he knew Peter would follow me. Jesus is seeking disciples. He's not looking for people that would just clap for him. Just like his wisdom. He's not looking for applause. He's looking for a heart full of humbleness. And this morning, it's the same. Jesus Jesus encountered Peter on this day at the Sea of Galilee. It was a godly appointment. And this morning, I want to look at four, four points. And I wish that the Holy Spirit would speak to us on the place in the, where we are right now. And that he would call us anew to follow him and we would do it. We read first that Peter fished all night. That's strenuous. It was not easy. You have to imagine. They went out at night. It was dark. They fished all night. And it's not like you just sit out a pole and sat down and relaxed and waited for the fish to bite. But it was a lot of work. They had to throw out the net and pull it back in. It was a lot of hard work strenuous and you have a night shift and after that you're frustrated you're exhausted you've worked all night and don't have anything to bring home and you notice it wasn't worth it the whole work was for nothing and in this moment in this situation Jesus comes and encounters Peter in his disappointment and the first point this morning I want to say Peter had the right priorities. This is a point that's so important for our life. Always and always again. Priorities. We have to set the right priorities. This Peter was so exhausted after that night. He had washed his net, nets and he was excited he's going to go home and rest. And he was frustrated. And then Jesus comes. And Jesus asks him for a favor. He asks him if he could use his boat to go out to preach to other people. And here we see that Peter had the right priorities. Jesus asks him a favor. And Peter doesn't close his heart. He laid aside his work. That what he still had to do. He laid it aside. He said, that's not as important as this what's right here in front of me that God's asking me to do. So Jesus encountered Peter in his disappointment, in his depression maybe, his tiredness, and Peter makes a decision. Yes, I will do this favor for Jesus. I will give myself to Jesus in this moment. And I don't know how it is with you, but so often we're distracted in our daily life. We're distracted maybe through our hobbies, our work, things that actually just rob our time. Today, it's so easy to just waste our time with all the medium, media. We can spend time on live stream and series and YouTube. And we could, even though we have a lot of time, we can just waste our day. It's important for us, too, that we set the right priorities, like Peter did. He set the right priority. Peter saw in this moment, he looked away from his work and everything else to serve Jesus. And I believe that Jesus saw this servant heart in Peter. He looked deep in Peter's heart. And he saw, here is someone 
that will put everything aside to serve other people. He saw this heart of serv this servant heart he had. In the Bible, the Word of God talks in another place about many people that have priorities in their life that are not right. It shows us how important it is. And maybe you can read Luke 14 after the sermon. It's a story about the invitation to the wedding feast. And Jesus said the people were invited, everything was ready, everything was prepared. The people were invited, but every one of them had something else they were planning to do. Everyone else had something they thought was better to do. It was very frustrating for those who had prepared the feast. And this shows that the people set the wrong priorities. And it hurts the Lord. It was the invitation to the wedding feast was an invitation to eternal life. It's a, an invitation to live on beside Jesus. So we need to set the right priorities in our life over and over again. Put Jesus in the first place and let our focus be completely on Jesus and sign word to focus on his kingdom. Because Jesus is the way, the truth. What is there better than to put your priority in the right place to make Jesus number one? He is perfect. He is the resurrection and the life. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Let's look at him. Focus on him. As Peter had this mighty fish catch, in this moment, the Lord said to him that everything that you need, I will give you. And I think this is interesting. Often we have worries in our life. But if we make Jesus our first priority, and we're fo focused on Jesus, he will provide for us. In this moment where Peter had this great catch of fish, the nets were ripping, the boat was starting to sink almost. This saying of Jesus, where he says, look, trust me, trust me, set the right priorities, and I will give you everything that you need for your life. God's word says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. This is a lesson that Peter, Peter learned the first day of his discipleship. He listened to Jesus, he set the right priorities, and he saw how Jesus provided for him. So that's my first point, set the right priorities. And I think there's a point every day, probably every day, we will be challenged to make the right decisions. The second point is obedience and faith. Peter said to Jesus, we read it in our text, according to your word, I will do it. According to your word, I will do it. And I believe that's what makes a true disciple. When a woman is following Jesus, they say, Lord, no matter what you tell me, no matter what you give me to do, I will do it. And I will do it because I trust you. I will do it because your word is real, your word is strong, and because I can trust you. And when you say something, even when people say, they will never work, never happen, in, a, in human view, but when Jesus says something, we can trust him and we say, according to your word, if you say it, I'll do it, amen? This shows what a true disciple is. Someone that has 
Jesus as his Lord. Not just a little bit, uh, sort of a Christian life, but they say he's the Lord of Lords, he's the Lord of their life. Someone that is humble enough to put his whole experience, his whole knowledge, his whole pride aside and say, I will do what you tell me to do in your word. Your word is precious. And we can recognize a true disciple according to his actions, his doings. The word says you will know them according to their fruit. Peter had so many reasons not to get in the boat again and go out again and throw out his nets, especially in the middle of the day. You have to imagine there were hundreds of people probably there that were listening to Jesus preach. And they heard Jesus telling Peter, go out again. And Peter, who knew everyone on that beach, no, you don't go fishing in the middle of the day. Everyone knew that. Peter knew it. He knew it better than anyone. There were a thousand reasons not to go out in the boat. But Peter believed. And that is the difference. Peter believed. He set aside all his experience. And he set his faith in the word of Jesus. His faith on Jesus. He set it above his thinking, above his knowing and experience. He put his faith in the first place. He said, Lord, according to your word, I will do it. And Jesus we can say, wow, Peter was so good. But the question is about us. Is it enough for us that Jesus says something and we do it? That is the challenge for us. In um, Acts 9, Ananias was with the disciples. In, in Damascus, when Saul experienced Jesus, one day the Lord went to Ananias and gave him a job. Go to Saul and pray for him. Now, this was a very difficult challenge because Ananias knew that Saul went to Damascus to persecute the Christians and throw them into prison and to kill them. So he, he was his greatest enemy at that moment. But Jesus told him to go to, to Saul. And he's also a disciple where you can say God could use him. And he trusted God's word. He prayed. Jesus said, Paul is praying. And that was enough for Ananias. Okay, I believe you. I'll do what you tell me to do. And you know, today there's so many people that God wants to use. There are people looking for their calling. And they're looking for all the different things they should do, and that's good. But they want to be used by God, but as soon as there's a challenge, they start discussing, arguing, and they st get stuck at that one place, but telling God, oh, it won't work. I don't know how you think. But as a disciple of Jesus, we need to believe him and obey him. I think the all-knowing and almighty God knows better than we do, right? I think we need to come down a few notches and realize God knows everything. and His ways are not our ways. So how does it look in our life? Does our faith on God determine our action, our faith in His Word? How we act with people? Do we love our enemies? This is a really challenge. It's one of the greatest challenges in our lives. The people that don't like us, 
that don't treat us right, to love them. But that's what God's Word says exactly. And the disciple, it shows a disciple when you say, Lord, it's hard for me, but according to your Word, I will do it. His Word determines our actions. His Word determines our direction. The Word of God challenges. When we do His Word, that shows we're a disciple. He, we do what He asks. He's, seek first His kingdom. Let's take the Great Commission. How does it look for us when Jesus says, do this or that? What do we do? Do we argue with Jesus? Or we say like, Peter, Lord, according to your word, I will do it. According to your word, I will trust you. No matter what I've experienced, and I know, I trust you. Is his word enough for us? Are we, or do we start arguing with him? The faith and obedience of the, on the Word of God is the strongest and the greatest thing about being a disciple. It's hard for us sometimes because God's way and God's thoughts are different than ours. But what he says is 100% right. We can trust him completely. His word works. And what he says will happen. Jesus said, Everyone that hears my words and does them, he is like a wise man that built his house upon a rock. In Matthew 7, 24. If we believe his word and trust his word, then it is a security. It's a great security that we have in our life. That when the storms of life come, and they will, that in the crisis that comes or will come, that we won't go under, we'll have a strong foundation. So let's believe the word of God and do it. That is the best and greatest assurance we have in our life because Jesus is faithful and he stands to his word. <clears throat> Come to the third point. It's about understanding and revelation. Peter recognized Jesus as the Messiah. We read in Luke 5, 8, as Simon Peter saw him, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Go away from me, for I am a sinful man, Lord. So Peter recognizes in this minute the power, the majesty, the holiness of Jesus Christ. He recognizes. It's interesting here in verse 5 we read, that Peter called Jesus Master. But in verse 8, after this catching a fish, he falls on his knees before Jesus and he says, Lord. He said Master, but now it's Lord. From Master over everything to Lord over my life. Something happened in Peter. He realized something, that Jesus wasn't just a good speaker, that he wasn't just a good person that had power to heal the sick, but it was the Lord, the Messiah, and Peter kneeled before him, and he gave his life to Jesus, and then Jesus Christ, he made Jesus Christ the Lord of his life, and in the light, of the Lord Jesus, Peter realized his own sinfulness. And this is totally normal. When we have a real encounter with our Lord Jesus Christ, 
and we notice all of a sudden who Jesus is in his light and his holiness and his power and his greatness. All of a sudden, you notice how sinful you are. How many things are in your heart that do not please Jesus? When we have a real encounter with the Lord of Lords, and we have fallen on our knees and confess our sins and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinful man. Isaiah fell down and confessed he had unclean lips as he saw the Lord. John the Baptist said, I'm not worthy to undo his shoe latches. In the presence of Jesus Christ, the greatest prophet that the world ever had, he realized he wasn't even worthy to undo the sandals of Jesus' shoes. He, he saw his sinfulness and the holiness and the righteousness and the light of Jesus Christ. Peter fell down before Jesus and confessed that he was a sinner. And when Jesus was Zacchaeus at his house, Zacchaeus confessed his guilt and, and desired to make restoration and restore what he'd done wrong. Jesus always revealed the sin of people. The light came into the darkness, and the darkness has to flee. So Jesus is the light, and in him there is no darkness. Peter had a revelation and an understanding from Jesus Christ, not just as a prophet, not just as a son of man, but as the Lord of Lords, as the Son of God, as the Messiah. Amen. And I want to encourage you. When Jesus' light pierces us and shows us our sinfulness, then it's not to, to condemn us or to, to shame us, but to cleanse us and to make us holy. I think that's so important for us to realize this. In His light, in His presence, we will see our sinfulness. But the Lord wants us to have His grace to repent and turn around. He shows us our sins to cleanse us from them. This is very important. The Word of God says it's His grace that leads us to repentance. And there's a great difference between the work of the Holy Spirit and which is grace, the work of the Holy Spirit, there's a big difference between the work of the Holy Spirit and the accusation of the enemy. Satan sometimes will reveal our sinfulness to us. Satan does it to shame us and to discourage us, to condemn us, to depress us. Jesus does it to call us to repentance, to bring us to joy. There's a big difference. So when the enemy accuses you, say, thank you, confess your sin, let yourself cleanse with the blood of Jesus, and then go further and follow the Lord on the way with him. He says, he that confesses his sins, he is faithful and just to cleanse us from our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And uh, the fourth and last point is calling and discipleship. I think that was one of the most important days in the life of Peter. It's a day he will probably never forget. And according to the Bible, it is a wonderful day. It was a special day as Jesus called Peter. In Luke 5, verse 10, Jesus said to Simon, Do not fear. From now on, you will catch men. You will be a fish for men. Jesus, Peter knee, knee, bows before Jesus, repents of his sin, and Jesus wants to take away this heaviness of his guilt. Jesus, this holy Jesus, the perfect, the righteous, holy Jesus, says, 
Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And he calls, gives Peter a calling. He says, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for men. He gives him another perspective. Before this, you caught fish, and that was good, but now, now there's a new epoch in your life. I'm going to use you, and I want you to follow me. And I'm saying something over your life. You will fish for men. This is your new job for the rest of your life. This is what you will do. Not in your own strength, but in my strength, in the strength of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus calls Peter, gives him the direction. Peter's not perfect. We see this. That says Peter himself. We know that. We read it in the Bible, in the Gospels. We read how Peter was so human. He had so many mistakes. But in spite of that, in spite of that, Jesus said, from today, you will be a fisher of men. Jesus knew Peter through and through. He doesn't need this perfect person. He needs a person that says, Lord, I'm full of sins. I'm not worthy. But when you have a chance to use me and forgive me, then I will follow you. And wherever today a person trusts Jesus, the Lord will work in him, even when we're not perfect, even when there's things in our life where we need to keep working on them through the power of the Holy Spirit. But what This is what God has always looked for, is a person who's a vessel, who's willing to surrender himself completely to the Lord. Say, Lord, you see me, you know me. Oh, Lord, if you can use me, I want to follow you. I trust you, I love you, and I will give you my whole life. Jesus called Peter to discipleship, to follow him. And we read that Peter immediately left the nets in the boat and he followed Jesus. And I think that's one of the greatest challenges of life to truly follow Jesus. To say, I leave the old things that I loved. The things I really loved, I leave them behind me to follow Jesus, to follow Him that is the life that has life, to follow Him that has eternity prepared for me, to follow Him whose word is true. You can't follow Jesus and drag all your fishing nets and your boats behind you. Like Peter, you have to decide to follow Jesus. If Peter will be true to his call, he has to leave the old things behind him. And the same is true for us in this time. When you want to follow Jesus, then you have to leave the old things your old life, leave it at the cross to follow Jesus. Jesus, he is the beginner and the finisher of our faith. He knows us through and through and from there and from the very beginning. It's so wonderful this story how the Lord was with Peter and writing the story with Peter. He said, from now on you will be a fisher of men. This, when we follow his life with Peter on the Bible and in the Acts, then we see that what Jesus spoke over his life at that moment, that it came exactly to pass. Jesus is mighty to do and he's faithful to do what he has promised always. We can be a hundred percent confident that we can trust him. What he says, he will do.
for sure. And in Romans 11, verse 23, it says, God's calling our gifts are without repentance. He knows us from the beginning. He sees our strengths. He sees our weaknesses. And what he has spoken, this is what he's spoken over our life. And he will do what he said. We can be sure of him. We see this in the life of Peter. I think it's very encouraging to see that. Even where Peter denied Jesus, he cried bitterly. He went back to his fishing. He went through the crisis of his life. But still, Jesus encountered him again because he didn't call, take back his calling. So it's sometimes in our lives. Maybe we lose focus of what Jesus called us to do. Maybe we've neglected his word. Maybe we've gone through crisis where we didn't know which way to go. But Jesus encountered Jesus anew, and he will encounter us anew. He's faithful. He will do what he says. He has called us to follow him. I want actually that as we come to the end of this sermon in this service, let's take these things with us. This sentence from Peter, according to your word, I will do it. Let that be in your heart. Let that be in our heart where we say, Lord, no matter what the world says, no matter what my fr friends may say, whatever my experience says, I want to trust your word. I set my trust and your faith on your word. And according to your word, I would do it. You know, many people love Jesus. They love to listen to Jesus. They love it when he works with might and power. They love the power that was going out from him. People were healed. Blind could, blind could see. The prisoners were set free. There was always something in Jesus' presence happening. He didn't hide himself. But the difference to a disciple and the people that were just excited about him and were watching him on the outside, the difference are the, your actions. Actions speak louder than words. The, Peter acted it, although everything was against it. He left his boat, he left his family to follow Jesus. The difference to a real disciple is his actions. Actions speak louder and more honestly than words. He said, Jesus, according to your word, I will do it. Your word's enough. And I wish that that would be that way in our words, in our life, where we say, Lord, I trust you, I trust your word, and I will follow you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your precious word. Thank you that you speak to us through your word. That you've given us this story of Peter to encourage us, to strengthen us. And maybe to correct us. And Lord, I ask you that you help us to trust you, to trust your word. Lord, help us to set the right priorities for our life. Help us to use our time like you want us to. Help us to put you on the first place and everything else behind that. Lord, help us. I thank you for your great love. I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your promises. And all the things you've given us up to now. And I pray, Lord, that afresh and you strengthen us with your strength. Help us to know your way the next weeks. 
I pray you help us in this time where it's difficult, where people are going through crisis, to look at you, to look at the beginner and ending of our finisher of our faith. Lord, we love you, we worship you, and we gladly follow you, not with our words, but with our actions. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen.